All right, we are so excited to launch Musical Mondays for everybody at home. This is all about inspiring young artists who love musical theatre and have a passion for it and just something that they can listen to and keep inspiring um, their goals and their and their achievements and, and just have a really good, um, feel-good moment. This is what it's about. And I am so, so blessed and, and so excited to have the incredible Lucy Durack as our first Musical Monday guest. Uh, so everyone at home say, hi, Lucy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all of yeah, I'm sure all of you know Lucy not only as the most incredible musical theatre artist in this country who's so well respected and known for performing in Legally Blonde, um, in most recently playing Princess Fiona in Shrek, uh, but also she won the hearts of Australians all around the country being one of the incredible judges on Australia's Got Talent last year. So uh, we are so lucky to have her and kind of pick her brain about the musical theatre industry and um, how much she loves it just as much as we do, I'm sure. So uh, here we go. I'm just going to launch into some questions and um, it's just about being honest and, and have some fun. <laughs> that sounds lovely. All right. So now I know a lot of people watching uh, this are aspire, aspiring young artists um, and they're trying to work out what's next in their careers. So you, like my brother Scott, went to Whopper and graduated with a BA in musical theatre. What is your view on tertiary training for actors in performing arts? Well, it was when I, I was there a very long time ago and it, I loved, I'm from Perth as well. So it was, I always knew once I sort of really wanted to enter the industry, I would probably need to move from Perth to Sydney or Melbourne. And so it bought me an extra three years at home in Perth, which was a win. And obviously it's just, it's a wonderful training ground. Um, and in those days, it was incredibly inexpensive for the sheer volume of um, tuition that we got. We got so much, and, and still I think is, is probably the case. I think if you were doing that many classes on your own dime, it would cost a lot more than a university course. So financially it was pretty good. Um, as I say, I was there a very long time ago, so I don't really know exactly what's uh, the go right now, but it's definitely not the be all and end all for everybody. Having said that, it was really good for me. I like institutions. I love school. I like having people, I like to do lists. I like things being ordered and I like routine. Um, but if you're not that sort of person, it, it you could, there's so many other ways into the industry. And if you don't, I actually didn't get in the first year I auditioned. I got into, there's a certificate course, which is, um, I think it's about 12 hours a week. And so I did that as well as doing one year of another Bachelor of Arts at um, the University of Western Australia and just worked really hard on lots of different aspects of singing and dancing and acting lessons, just voraciously learnt as much as I possibly could. And fortunately, being a certificate student, it's actually a really good course, particularly for people who are in Perth. It's a big commitment if you're moving from somewhere else in the country. But if you happen to live in Perth anyway and you get into the course, I would highly recommend doing it because you then get to go and see lots of, you get a real in to Whopper and to see whether it is actually something that you want to do yourself. And we got to go and see lots of different shows that Whopper was putting on for free or for really reduced rates. And yeah, just to be around. And we were taught by all of the same lecturers that taught the BA. Anyway, so I, I was a little bit young when I finished school. So I was still 16 when I started certificate. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the following year I got into the BA, which was brilliant. But having said that, my husband, Chris, he just got into 42nd Street, the musical, when he was about the same age as 16, 17. And he has done, he's kind of learnt on the job and his career is absolutely as valid and enriching and, um, and he's learnt just as much as I have, but just on the job. In fact, you know, there's lots of things you do, you can, as you know, you can kind of only learn on the job. So, and then there's everything in between. There's so many different versions of that. And so I really think if you don't get in, don't despair. I also know some really amazing performers who tried like seven times and got in on the seven go and things like that. So don't give up if you don't get in and you really want to go. But if it might not be the right path for you anyway, and that doesn't does definitely doesn't mean that you're not going to have a career in musical theatre. That's really great advice. And, and I think, as, as I'm sure you agree with me, that there are a lot of ensemble cast members that we get to be a part of and, and get to enjoy shows with that are just as talented as those ones that get leads. Um, what was it for you that gave you that opportunity or that chance to go from the chorus to being a lead performer? Um, I wasn't a very... I, my first job, I was in the ensemble and I understudied and I wasn't a very good understudy. I look at understudies now in awe and, and swings mm -hmm. and in absolute awe and it's such a 
specific skill set and have to have such a specific brain to be able to really handle it. And we just in Shrek, we've had some of the most incredible um, swings and other studies go on and do incredible jobs. And it's always really impressive. Um, but yeah, I don't think I was a very good understudy. And so I understudied in Mamma Mia, Sophie, Ali and Lisa, the three young women and was in the ensemble of that. And, um, and at the end of that, I was actually quite disheartened because I thought, oh, I've worked my whole life towards this. And I'm, I don't think you're very good at it. And so I actually went and did a law degree. I started a law degree. I only did one semester of it, I should quickly say, um, at Sydney Uni. And anyway, long story short, it kind of made my thirst and hunger for the industry grow even stronger. And I ended up deferring my law degree for about seven years. And then I, never uh, <laughs> I kind of got it out of my system when I played Elwood's Illegally Blunt. Um, but I, um, yeah, I, after that, I, I then decided, I was like, all right, well, I don't feel good about myself when I'm, I don't think I'm suited to the actual job of being, of, of doing what I was doing in Mamma Mia. And so I'm going to try and get a, a role, a tiny little role maybe, but I feel like that might be more something that's suited to me um, if, I, if I'm lucky enough. And so I just, instead of taking ensemble um, cover jobs, I just decided instead to work as hard as I could possibly doing as many, I still do it. I still do lots of classes. I, I'm a great believer in just continuing to brush up on your skills always. And um, I just loads of classes and I worked for um, like, I don't know, a couple of years, I guess, as a receptionist um, and doing temping and I, um, and, and I would just use whatever money I had investing back into my tuition that I continued on with. And yeah, and I started to, I did start, I was lucky enough to get a few lead roles in the now sadly defunct production company productions, which was such a great stepping stone for so many of us who really, you know, had a dream in our heart to play a role in a musical and hadn't had that opportunity yet. It was, and, but to get to do that in such a professional setting with completely professional um, company was, was thrilling. So I actually got to do, play Laurie in Oklahoma and um, the actor King Kiss Me Kate uh, in the same year. And then uh, from that, I, I did a few of their, over the years, I did Miss Dorothy in Thoroughly Love and Millie and Peggy Sawyer in 42nd Street. And whilst I was in uh, 42nd Street, we, they, they announced that, oh, and I'd just been doing a li tiny little show called Respect that was kind of the little show that could. It was only um, four of us on stage, Rhonda Birchmore, Belinda Wellston, Eleanor Rockabara and myself, and Kelly Dixon was our musical director mm -hmm. and she played on um, on stage and we ha would pick up a bass player and a, um, and a drummer in each city. But yeah, we ran for like nearly a year. Anyway, during that year, they announced that Wicked was coming to Australia and I had been dreaming of that show for heard <laughs> <laughs> in music. And I was lucky enough to audition and that playing Glinda in Wicked was my first lead role in a big main stage show. And so it was, yeah, I still, I kind of still to this day can't believe I got to do it. It was so lucky. And then I ended up doing it for a number of years and 1,300 performances. But who's counting? Wow. <laughs> I, th I think we all knew in the industry that that was a perfect role for you. So we were so excited when you got it. I mean, as soon as that role was announced, we, we knew that it was, it was made for you. So, and you did an amazing job. So congrats That's on so that. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. It was everything I dreamt of and more. And yeah. I really had dreamt of it for a very long time. And I really do believe in putting out there, like really thinking really hard about what you in your heart wants. Because I do believe if everybody thought about what they really, really want in their hearts, then we would actually all want something ever so slightly different. Even if it looks mm -hmm. like it's the same, it's not. We, we all would actually want something ever so slightly different. And then that's your goal. And and you can keep going. And even if you don't get that particular goal, you often get things along the way which are actually better and more suited to you. And you have to learn to, I think, let go of being so strict about exactly what your goal is and start to open your mind a bit to other things that might be actually more suited to you and, and what makes your heart sing. Oh, that's beautiful. Also, um, when I went to see you play Princess Fiona in Shrek, I noticed that it was right after you had your second baby. Uh, how hard do you find it juggling family and the work? Look, as you know, it, it is a juggle. There's no doubt about it. It's, we, we have we've built a little support network. Chris, my husband, is a fantastic dad and fantastic husband and great support. And we have a team of, of 
people who help us, really amazing nannies in each city. And uh, my mum has helped us greatly over the years. And yeah, we just have, and we, we've become very good close friends actually with these nannies because they have become part of our family. And yeah, and I've actually just realised, I'm actually realising at the moment because we're in, in staying at home and self-isolating, mm-hmm. Chris and I are doing all of the bedtimes. And I said, oh, God, our kids don't go to bed until so late. I don't know how our nannies did it. They're used to go theatre kids, aren't they? They're used to staying up late. <laughs> I'll be like, at the interval, like, oh, the kids went down by 7.30 or 8 o'clock and I'll be here and I'll be like, it's nearly 10 o'clock. Why is Polly still awake? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's been, it actually has been so great, having said that. And that, as much as it was, it's such a trying time for everybody and, there's lots of trying and challenging parts, but the getting to spend time with my kids has been really brilliant. So I agree. Um, I do yeah. agree with that. Going <laughs> <laughs> uh, back to work up, uh, when Teddy was five weeks old, when I started, wow. um, was daunting, but I had, I had, the company were really supportive and I, yeah, it kind of, it actually worked. We were really, Chris and I were really organised and I think that's, you know, that's just, you've got to be really organised. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, moving to a different city and starting a job with a five week old baby was, was tricky, but we did it. And I'm glad that we did. I, I think that it is, if you're organised and you've got the right support around you that you can make, even if you don't have it at by way of family, um, then you, you can still make that around yourself. And it was, it was really great. Everybody was really nice. And my kids, yeah, spent a, some time backstage and it was really kind of magical in a lot of ways. Yeah, well, awesome. Now, you've had such huge success in Australia on stage and on the screens, of course. Are there any plans to try and make it on the international stage? Um, not at this stage. <laughs> well, not, not this few months. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm never say never, but I love, I love living in Australia. And with my own family, my mum and dad and my sisters and their families and aunts and uncles and cousins all being in Perth, I feel far enough away from them already being on the other side of the country. We live in Melbourne and I, yeah, I, I love, I love my life here and we have such a great community and network here in Australia that I feel really passionately about living and working here. Having said that, if, if the right thing came along, like I wouldn't say no to it as a sort of one off here or there, but, but no, mostly I just, I love living in Australia and we have a great industry and we do. We, so many sort of groundswell things. And I know, obviously, right now, nobody, it's, the industry is, is not a thing, but we will rebuild and we will come back and, and hopefully we'll, we'll come back with kind of having learnt things in this time of sort of self-reflection and, and do things better than ever and in a more holistic way. Oh, that's fantastic. All right, now it's speed question time. So all you have to do is say the first thing that comes to your mind as quickly as you can over the next minute. Um, and then we'll, what we'll be doing is you'll be versing other Australian musical theatre stars for, I guess, the one that gets the most answers. Okay, so just like one word or whatever comes to your mind. I'll set the stopwatch and then we will get into it. Okay, here we go. Uh, favourite musical? Wicked. <laughs> Favourite character you have played? Elwitz. Best co-star kiss? Oh, I can't, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Not good, just, you can say your husband, it's fine. Fine, <laughs> especially my husband. <laughs> uh, one word to describe Corona. Oh, challenging. What would you be if you were not a performer? Maybe a lawyer. <laughs> I did some. Favourite musical theatre performer? I, I really love Sutton Foster. Mm. Such a great musical singer. A quirky thing about you that you do that people might not know? Um, I like to wear pyjama tops inside out so there's no tags. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And the thing you do most while stuck inside? Uh, at the moment, just play with my kids. And that's it. So that was one minute ten. Not, not bad. Pretty good. Now, just to finish up, and I know we don't want to bring the mood down after such a positive and inspirational chat, but I guess there's one thing that everyone's kind of thinking about and talking about, and that's... Um, 
you know, the coronavirus and we've had to close our dance studios and, and uh, lay off, you know, 40 staff. Um, and it's really affected us in just not only in the way of not being able to do what we love to do every day, but also not having that place where kids can come and be creative um, and have that outlet for them. You know, some, some kids don't get on at school. Some kids don't like going to school, but when they come to dance, they have another group of friends. They've got a, a place to be safe and to explore things and to do things wrong and to sing wrong notes. And that doesn't matter because we will support each other. So um, it's affected so many industries um, and especially our entertainment industry, bringing it to a halt. Um, how has not being able to work affected you? Look, so far, it's, I have been quite busy at home with my kids, but the more I think about it, the more my brain just keeps sort of um, going, oh, great, and then, oh, no, I won't. And I don't know when I will, and I don't know when any of us will, and I don't mm -hmm. know what this will be. But I think we need to just trust in the fact that if we do the right thing, which I really do believe is if you can stay home, stay home, then we will get over this faster. And we will get back into this. And like I said before, hopefully we will get into new ways of doing things. And this is a perfect time to really reflect. And like I said before, really think about what, as a performer, you are really passionate about. And do more of that. You've got, you will have probably a bit more time on your own. And so, you know, Google and YouTube and do all of the things of, of all of your favourite performers and your favourite performances and favourite musicals and whatever makes your heart sing and maybe do things like I'm a, I love doing things like vision boards so maybe if you have a printer find a whole bunch of google images that that really make you happy or quotes or just whatever it is that makes your heart feel happy do do that cut out old magazines and and make yourself vision boards to put up in your room and just do try and do things that make you feel happy because when you're feeling happy it, it, even if it feels selfish you're going to be a better person for all of your family or your, your people who are in your surroundings. And I think so the more you can kind of be gentle with yourself and know that things will come back and they might come back better than ever. Nobody knows. And I think be, don't be hard on yourself because nobody knows how to do this right. We're all, every single person in the world is trying to figure out what it is. So be patient with yourself and those around you and try as best you can to maybe get into some sort of meditation to keep calm and peaceful and centered and um and, and try and use this time to to really just investigate what makes your heart sing you're incredible thank you so much for joining us on musical mondays and thank you for that beautiful inspirational things to do at home while you're stuck at home and uh, it is it's none of us know how long this is going to go for or you know how long what it's going to do to our industry or what it's going to do to these kids and, the, and that generation so i think it's a matter of you know everyone giving it our best shot flatten the curve and um as you said who knows we might come back bigger and better and let's all stay positive and um yeah, let, let's fight. That's what we do as, as artists and, and in the entertainment industry, we fight for, for the roles we're given. So um, I think we can come back bigger and better. So from, from the bottom of my heart, Luce, thank you. You are incredible. I do look up to you um, a lot and I love coming to see you on shows and I can't wait to see you up on stage again. So thank you so, so much. Thanks for the wonderful questions and the opportunity to have a chat. Thanks, Luce. Yes. Mwah. Thank you, Luce. Bye. <laughs> thank you. Bye.